Chapter 37 of Jane Eyre is set at dusk as Jane goes to Ferndean. She watches Rochester come out of the house, noticing his disfiguration. She goes into the house, talks with one of the servants, and arranges to surprise Rochester. When she goes in to see him, he is subdued and resigned. Upon her entrance, he assumes she must be a ghost or a spirit. Jane walks over and grabs his hand. Realizing she's really there, however, he becomes delighted. Jane tells him that she intends to stay with him and tells him about her uncle's fortune. Rochester is convinced his injuries will prevent Jane from wanting to marry him, but she reassures him. They dine together, and he tells her how much he has missed her. The next morning, they walk through the woods. Jane explains what she's been doing for the past year and assures Rochester she was not in love with St. John. Rochester tells her how much he values and respects her, wanting their relationship to be about equality. He compares himself to the chestnut tree and proposes. They decide to marry in three days. Rochester tells Jane that religion has become more important to him and that he's begun to pray. On the past Monday night, he says, he asked God to take him from this life to a world where he might reunite with Jane. He stood by the window with the moon shining in and suddenly shouted, Jane, Jane, Jane. He thought he heard her voice reply, I am coming, wait for me. Until now, each event that has seemed to have a supernatural aspect has turned out to have a rational explanation. For example, the light Jane saw in the red room was from a lantern someone was carrying outside. The shrieks from Thornfield's third floor were produced by Bertha. The vampire-like figure wearing Jane's wedding veil was Bertha as well. However, there is no rational explanation for how Jane and Rochester could have heard each other's voices calling across the many miles that separated them. This telepathic experience seems to convey that the lovers are fated to be together. It shows the strength of their bond. The chapter ends with the pair reflecting on this. Jane says that the coincidence is too incredible to explain. Rochester faithfully praises my maker. Interestingly, Rochester's reaction to Jane's appearance is that it must be a dream. When reality is so wonderful, it can only be unreal, a dream.